What's up, everybody? Welcome to another round of the Riot Comedy Podcast presented by Ararat. Shout out to Ararat, natural spring water, keeping us healthy and hydrated over here at Riot Comedy. I think um, on this episode of the podcast, um, we got a few things to talk about NBA related, but I want to start off. We actually don't, we're not like the rest of the sports shows and podcasts. We don't spend a ton of time talking about LeBron, but something I wanted to bring up was that in Atlanta last night, he's shooting free throws and the crowd is chanting Kobe's better. And the Lakers awesome. have lost a lot of games lately. People are starting to say he's actually washed now. I know they've been saying that for years, but he's actually washed now is what they're saying. Um, so chanting Kobe's better, hilarious. What what are do you have any other thoughts on that besides just hilarious? No, I think it's funny. Like I don't think LeBron's washed. I don't. Depends what your definition of washed is. Like yeah, he's probably washed compared to you know prime LeBron James, but. He's still better than whole basketball teams. Like he's still better than every player on certain teams. Like if he goes to the Detroit Pistons, he's the best player on the Detroit Pistons. Plain and yeah. simple. So like you can't be washed if you can be the best player on a team. Like several teams. Like even if like yeah, like I don't care what everybody says like yeah, Lamella Lamella Ball can hoop right now, but even if he joins the Hornets, the best player on that team is LeBron. So he's not washed in the sense of uh you know, scrubbed out like we saw Paul Pierce at the end of his career. But, you know, it's probably about that time, though, for him. So, but no thoughts on other than, like, go Atlanta fans for doing shit like that. Like, I'm in on it. Uh, I think it's super funny. And I wish more crowds would, like, get into doing things like that. Like, bring back some of the disrespectful chants and, like, who cares if players get mad at what fans say? Like, I don't even care, dog. Like, as long as fans ain't running around... As long as fans ain't running around screaming racial slurs, n words, things like that, willy nilly all over the place, yeah, dog. Like, I don't, go. I don't care if they say that your wife's butt ugly and they would never even bang her butt. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, what? <laughs> I don't care what people say to people, dog. I do not care. These fans spend a lot of money because you could continuously raise ticket prices, dog. Like, feel like Easy E. If somebody's in the first row and they paid ten grand for that seat just to scream at you, I paid your salary today, player. Like it didn't because you make, you know. Seven hundred thousand dollars a game if you're you know top ranked in the NBA, but like this is what pays your salary. Who cares? Their lives are worse than yours, probably. Like at the end of the day, just be a basketball player and who cares? So, but yeah, more fans do do more rowdy shit. Take it personally and go harder, like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan would have taken it personally and dropped forty on their head and said it's that guy's fault. Right, for sure. So just just enjoy it, man. Like it's fine, it's fine. Like I wouldn't care. Like even like I used to do mortgages. Um, and I would, and here's the thing though, if I, if somebody paid me $65 million a year to do mortgages, I don't care who's in the background screaming at me the whole time I'm trying to do them. Don't care. Don't care, dog. Don't care who even it is. Put up, put up, put up with a lot for, and, and that's just hecklers. Those, those, don't even, those aren't even people that are actually disgruntled. That's not even like real anger. It's different working in customer service because you got to deal with people that are really pissed off. Yeah, I did it all the time. These, these people are just there having fun and it's fun to heckle people when you're at a sporting event. I did it all the time and it didn't even bother me because like, oh yeah, this job pays me okay. It was fine. You can scream at me. Whatever. Like I never had to do I've shit face to face. I've seen I've seen stuff at high school basketball games that is worse than the than the shit these dudes in the NBA. Have. Oh, thousand percent. Thousand percent. And and I, thousand percent I don't see dog. High kids getting players getting getting people thrown out of games, getting fans thrown out for for doing shit to him and bothering mm. him and saying lewd things like, so what what are, what are we doing here? I think that's like a big, like, indicator of where the state of the NBA is. Well, that's the thing is like you know you guys want to talk about ratings, like ratings are down, things like that. Like, there's like a couple reasons why ratings are down, and you've seen a lot of people suggest ideas like Shaq suggested there was no parity because everybody just shoots threes. I think that's accurate. I think there being no rivalries in the NBA is accurate. I think them basically eliminating defense by rule changes is like pretty accurate. I think I think there's so many things that limit the ratings and also like athletes don't even act like normal people anymore though. Like that's the yeah. thing is like things that people love are people that they can see themselves as these people. Like yeah, you don't see yourself as like being able to dunk from the free throw line, but you're like oh he works hard. Oh like he had a humble beginning. Like, oh, like, not wearing fucking $10,000 outfits and and shit like that, dog, and strutting in like you're on a fight. Like, 
strutting in like you on the cover of fucking Vogue or something, dog. But in reality, like you got a basketball game to play, dog. Like, yeah. you guys get and so much also, more freedom. Dude, a lot of these dudes are so far removed from reality now because most NBA players are pampered from the time they're teenagers now. Right. Because they all grow up right. in the AAU circuits. And it's about to get even worse because of the NIL. So wait, wait, you have NBA players where every NBA, every player in the NBA was already getting bread in college, which I'm happy for him. Like, don't get me wrong, but yeah, get your paper that when when you're getting that kind of money, like not hating, I'm just saying you just don't know what it's like for 99.9% of people. Right. They can't relate. to. And that's the thing, dog. So you're taking like. All of the roughness out of the NBA, all the tough guys in the NBA, you take out, for instance, like, there ain't no more hood cats in the league, and it's because, like, who ain't, the fuck ain't, can... Ain't, a- no, ain't no, like, real motherfuckers in the league at all. Because who can like, fucking you're, afford to... You're never, you're never gonna get a Steven Jackson in the league again. Who can afford to keep up, though? Like, no, like, my kid didn't get sponsored at a young age, and no, like, my kid doesn't do a travel AAU team because I can't afford it, and no, he doesn't have trainers at 12. So, like, it's it's just insane. Like, you got... it. it it, it's going to take a certain athlete out of the NBA also that is, like, a necessity to win championships. Absolutely. So, you know, a lot of people you're, talk about, like, well, look. You're already seeing it. You're already seeing it. How many dudes are in the NBA that are, like, because you need a dog on your team. How many dudes are, like, that dog that, like, like, Draymond's, like, a last of a dying breed. There's not too many of him around that will, like, you know, <laughs> go at people. And they let this motherfucker bully him, too. I'm like, dude, Draymond Green, like, 20 years ago, dog, somebody would have knocked your fucking head off your dude, shoulders for this dude, shit. No doubt. No doubt, man. No doubt. Which is fine. Like, bully these cats. They're going to let you fucking yeah, run around you and bully them. You when, when you're in competition, you should bully people if you can. 100%. But, I mean, how many teams do you even see where it's like, oh, like, if this team had, like, a dog on their team, like, that's what they're missing. And, like, it's so many guys. Like, even even, like, the Celtics, like, before they put together this fucking ruckus of an all-star team that they have like back when they made that finals and, and lost to the warriors and shit like y'all lost that finals to the warriors purely because like y'all weren't tough enough and if you guys would have had a tony allen or a Kenyon martin or somebody like that on your team y'all probably would have won yeah. well especially like Kenyon martin because Kenyon martin's like also all-star he's also super good at basketball <laughs> right. But, like, just cats like that in general, though, where it's, like, even, like, a Steven Jackson or somebody that can rally these troops and be like, nah, man, fuck these dudes. Like, they think they, like, I'm from here, motherfucker. Like, I don't take this shit, and y'all shouldn't either. Like, you need that kind of shit, dog. Like, we wouldn't even be as successful as we are right now, which is, like, not very. But, like, there's a good chance we're not as successful as we are right now. Like, if we were, if somebody would be like, you guys are funny at fucking 10 years old, and then just fucking handed us a bunch of money and traveled us around and we were fucking anytime we didn't like something they took it off our plate so we didn't have to deal with it like we'd be way worse at our craft and we wouldn't work as hard so like right that's just that's just the name of the game it's that it's the animal of the beast so you know we'll we'll we'll, we can maybe dive into that a little bit more on another podcast because i'm i'm i want to get into a little bit of the nba cup because i'm just curious like who do you think is going to win it uh Man, it's something I, I think I think the Bucks, man. Something tells me the Bucks are gonna. I like it. I like Milwaukee. I also, uh, man, there's a lot of good teams in the Cup right now, and hot yeah. teams too. Like the Mavericks have been playing good basketball. The Knicks are. I I I'm picking the Knicks because I think they've been playing some of the best basketball, and I also think that the end season tournament probably means more to them than it means to like a Dallas Mavericks who just lost yeah. the NBA Finals. Uh, Milwaukee would probably like to win it just to prove that they're not scrubs. OKC will probably like to win it. The Rockets are in it. Uh, Orlando's in it. They'll they'll want to win it, but they got no Palo, so they don't really have too much of a chance. Like the Rockets will want to win it. The Hawks will probably want to win it. The Hawks are playing good basketball, actually. Uh, didn't know if I'd say that this whole season, but Trey Young's hooping. Um, Trey Young is hooping, man, and this is something that I would like to touch on because. We did a podcast before the season started, and we were completely perplexed as to why Trey Young is still on the Atlanta Hawks. Because just to keep people in mind, last night against the Lakers, he went for 30 points, 20 assists. And we were talking about it last night during the game. And what we were discussing was if somebody said that somebody in the NBA today had a 30 point, 20 assist game, there's only like two or three players you would even guess. You would guess Joker, you would guess Trey Young, and then maybe somebody else randomly. Like, you'd be like, maybe James Harden turned the clock back or something. 
But most people who actually know things about the NBA would put Trey Young in the. If you had two guesses, you would say Joker and Trey. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, like, what's the deal? I know he's undersized. I know he doesn't play a lot of defense. I know all these things about Trey Young, but you could say half the league doesn't play defense. You could say lots of guys can't shoot the ball. Like, you can say so many things about so many different players, but when you can get 30 points and 20 assists and people see it and they're like, damn, good job, Trey, instead of being like, whoa, like, that says something. So what do you think it is that people are like, we don't want Trey Young for like a measly, measly two first round picks. You could have given half the haul that the Timberwolves gave for Rudy Gobert and have Trey Young and we know who's better. So I, I think there, there, there may be something else at play like locker room politics or something like that. Maybe he doesn't have, sometimes it's as simple as people don't mesh well. Like, Melo had a bad reputation among, like, league offices, but his locker room reputation is, like, immaculate. Like, no no teammate of Carmelo Anthony ever has spoken bad about him that I have Mm-mm. heard myself. Mm-mm. I'm not saying it's never happened, but I've never heard it. But for some reason, he always had this reputation of, like, being, I don't know, maybe he's, like, intimidating to, like, these, like, corny white dudes that are in the front office. Yeah. Um, so, but Trey Young, maybe... They're probably not intimidated by Trey Young's tiny ass, but maybe it's something like little that we don't know about that league executives are like, eh, I don't really see the value. Or maybe it's just that a lot of these dudes don't really know basketball, and most of them don't, because you see the state of most NBA teams, the teams that are always at the bottom stay at the bottom, the teams that are always at the middle stay in the middle. There's fluctuation here and there, but you know, a lot of these teams but, don't really know how to put together a roster. But my thing is, like, you have these guys around the NBA – and whenever, uh, like when the Hawks were trading DeJounte, uh, or, okay, so when the Hawks were trading DeJounte, we saw a portion of, like, everybody in the NBA would prefer to have DeJounte over Trey Young, right? And I, 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 it's one of those things where it's like, dude, we, we know, okay, like, we know who's better at basketball. Like, I ain't knocking DeJounte, Duke can hoop, but, like, we, we know the deal here. And, like, I get that, like, there's certain things that, like, this guy doesn't mesh well in locker rooms or they have a bad front office reputation or you have this or you have that. But, like, this reminds me of, like, when Mike Tomlin was talking about, I think that we forgot that, like, you're supposed to coach and develop and help people mature and be in people's corners and support them and help them grow instead of just being like, well, he's not going to give me exactly what I want right away, so fuck that guy. And it's like, well, then you're not going to beat the Boston Celtics. Then you're not going to be able to beat the New York Knicks. Like, if you're the Lakers and you had Trey Young right now, I know you don't fucking lose to Atlanta last night. I know that for a fact. I know that if LeBron James was playing 25 minutes right now and AD was playing 30 minutes right now and Trey Young was playing 35 minutes right now, they would have more wins. I know that as well. I know that to be a fact because now LeBron James is the third best player on your team, like the way that, like, usage rate wise. And now he's better. AD's better because he actually has a guy he can run pick. Like, I know that LeBron and AD are really good at pick and roll. But, like, LeBron can't shift his way into the post nifty, nifty doo-dah fucking fake. He plows way down there, but he ain't That's it. Nowhere. That's it. So what good does that do, AD, to have another 6'10 dude barreling down the middle of the fucking floor weighing 250 pounds just being like, Wah! like, they have a great pick and roll, but it's not the same as, like, the slippery guy who can throw you an oop. It's just not the same. Yeah. So, like, AD would benefit from it. Their three-point percentage would be better. Maybe you don't have two white guys in your starting lineup. I don't know. Maybe. Especially American whites. Like, maybe you don't do that. Maybe you don't fucking do that because right now, the way that you start your team, you don't even have a point guard who can run full speed. You don't. You don't have a point guard who can run full speed in your starting five. You don't have a single guy that you can that can catch a ball throw it to them at the three-point line, and then they sprint down the floor fast and set up an offense. They don't have a single guy on their team that can actually do that consistently in their whole starting five. I know that Trey can do that. Most point guards in the NBA can do that. They're missing a lot from being a real contender. See, that's the thing, though. So, like... That kind of leads me to my next point of, like, them and they they're on a bit of a losing streak. The Warriors are on a bit of a losing streak. Bound to happen. They're going to see each other in the play-in again? Instead of first LeBron, first round of the play-in, loser goes Well, on. in our predictions for the podcast and things like that, we th- we said the Warriors wouldn't make the playoffs, is what we yeah. said. 
and I might have to bite my tongue on that. But I, but like through the first like two three weeks of the season, I was like, these dudes, like they're winning. There's no way they're good. Like there's no way they're good. Then I watched them play, and I'm like, these dudes got good ball movement. But something tells me that like Steph Curry can't be your best player, and then you don't know who the second best player is, and be like, hey, 36 year old, can you march us somewhere important by yourself? Seems like a lot to put on somebody's shoulders. Um, Draymond Green might be their second best player, and he can't score. Not really. So, like, they're missing a lot as well, but I'm glad that the NBA is starting to rebalance out a little bit. I, I think that there's a chance they play each other in the play-in, but I also think there's a chance that, like, if things don't change drastically for the Lakers, like, they don't even make the play-in in this crowded Western Correct. Conference. Correct. They're, they're, they're in the 10 spot right now, and they're one game up on San Antonio. Like, so I hate to at. say this. But if I'm J.J. Redick, I need some more pull in this building. I need some more pull. I got I to gotta be able to do something. I got to be able to fucking... Go ahead. The, the Lakers, this, this roster sucks. This is a poorly put together roster. The Lakers don't have, they don't have a real point guard. They don't have anyone who's a dog. And they don't have a good athlete. LeBron is not a good athlete at this point in his career mm -hmm. considering he can't sit down on defense. He's not, yeah, he's still a great athlete by normal human being standards, but let's compare him to himself. He's a shell. He's, he's lost a step. He's been playing. He's 40 dog. And he looks like a 40 year old LeBron James. Anthony Davis has been riddled with injuries. Ticky tech shit his whole career. He's not the same. He can't jump aside. Doesn't have the same bounce. Their best athlete is Rui. And that dude has flashes of being a really sucky basketball player. Correct. Correct. So and so they're so far away from having anything real or contentious. Like they suck. Hell yeah, they suck. So if not worse, as I just described the Lakers. We'll we'll leave it at that because I don't want to talk about sucky teams anymore. I'd like to maybe talk about some teams that are worth a damn. So let's let's get into it a little bit. So like when you look right now at the NBA, usual suspects seem to be pretty good. The Dallas Mavericks. Starting to win some games, starting to look a little bit better. I mean, I think it helps when Luka plays and he's getting 30-point triple-doubles. That usually helps. Um, the Mavericks in general, though, do you see them, like, actually making a push for the finals? Or do you look at them like, one year, good job, step back, you ain't making the finals this year? No, I I, I think um, I, I picked them at the beginning of the season to, to win the West again and lose to Boston again. And you and, still feel um, good about it? I, I still feel good about that. <laughs> I do think Oklahoma City could take that step towards losing also <laughs> and and get out of the West. But um I don't I don't look at any other team. I don't I, I don't watch any other team play and think they could win the West. Maybe maybe Phoenix with a healthy Kevin Durant could win the West and also lose. Yeah. But um Phoenix doesn't look like an actual championship team to me. Dallas has flashes of it. Oklahoma City looks like it sometimes. But Dallas looks like they're also in the process of figuring it out. Um, so this is this so is I'm the play-in. This is the play-in right now in the Western Conference. Suns, Denver, Minnesota, Lakers, and then just outside, San Antonio, Sacramento. The Lakers are in the 10th seed. They're one game up on San Antonio, game and a half up on Sacramento. I don't... Uh, that's the other thing is like I don't know if I like the Lakers' chances there because that's a crowded that's crowded. Um, keep in mind right now that the Milwaukee Bucks are one game above five hundred, and they are in the six. No, they're five hundred right now, and they're they're in the six seed. Would make the playoffs outright right now. Lakers one game above five hundred. Ten seed. The ten seed Chicago Bulls are ten and fourteen. <laughs> Yuck. Atlanta, 13-11, and 11, though. That's that's pretty wild. So do you think Atlanta's going to make the playoffs this year? Is Trey Young and these guys going to be like, fuck it, like, let's go to the playoffs, like, let's let Trey just be Trey, and, like, we should win games? When you say, when you say go to the playoffs, do you mean a top-10 seed or a top-6 seed? I mean when the fucking everything is said and done, will they be in the eight teams in the playoffs? They, they might get the ninth seed and then win the play-in. You know, like, that's what I'm saying. But, like, do we think Atlanta... Absolutely. I look at these. Yeah, because they're teams, definitely they're, better than Brooklyn. Yeah, they're, they're way better than Brooklyn, Indiana, and Chicago. And Brooklyn's going to try to suck the rest of the year. Brooklyn's going to start making trades to get Cooper Flag. Like, that's that's the goal. That was their goal when the season started. They even made trades this year 
They traded away other first round picks to to the Rockets so they could get their first round picks back. So like, what 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 are we doing? So Brooklyn's gonna suck on purpose. Miami will get a little bit better. Who this Eastern Conference yeah, is not and, very and good. Should be in the playoffs. No question. No question. They should be in the playoffs. They, yeah, they they'll make it. A decent enough roster, and they have a top five player in the conference. Like they should. Easily, easily make the playoffs. I'll be. Trey Young is a top five player in the Eastern Conference, isn't he? Ooh. Absolutely. I'll name some guys. You tell me if Trey Young's better than that. Jalen Brunson. Oh. That, that, that's, that's a tough one. I, I think. As of I right would, now, no. I, I was going to say, I, I would probably right now take Trey Young. Donovan Mitchell. I would take Donovan Mitchell. I would rather have Trey Young in the regular season, but I would rather have Donovan Mitchell in the playoffs. So there's one guy, Giannis. You know the answer. Yeah, Giannis is the best player in the conference. Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid is better than Trey Young, but I would rather have Trey Young. Jimmy Butler. No, not anymore. Hmm, Damian Lillard. Trey's not better than Dame. He's not. I won't even let you have it. He's not. (laughs) He's not better than Dame. But even at this point, you you put Dame on a super sucky team. You put Dame on Atlanta and roll the balls out. I think it's it's not. It's not a clear cut. No, no. He's. I'm not letting you have it. Can't. Seen Dame drag a lot of Portland Trailblazers teams to the playoffs a lot, and I've seen Trey Young miss the playoffs a lot we're, with the Atlanta we're, Hawks. We're not talking. We're not talking about 2016, 2015, Damian Lillard. We're talking about 2024, I think, I th- Damian Lillard. I think Dame is damn near still that good. Like when you watch him play, like when you watch the Bucks play, zero fault of this is on Dame. Like this dude's out here hooping, dog. Yeah. Like he really is. I don't know what his numbers look like this year. I'm sure that I can tell you pretty damn fast. Um. Let me pull it up real quick. Cause I bet you this dude's out here getting twenty five. I bet you he's having a twenty five five and five season. Yeah, probably. He might even be getting like twenty seven, yeah. twenty eight. Yeah, he's getting he's getting twenty six, seven assists, twenty six, seven and four and a half rebounds. Yeah, dude, yeah, he's, super he's, solid. He's still, he's but still out here killing. but there is a valid case to be made that Trey Young is a top five player in the Eastern Conference, and I'm super cool with that. I think that that's pretty damn fair. Um. I, like it's it's a it's a it's a case to be made. It's not it's not a there is, thing. There's but it's a fair but it's a fair case to be made. Um, and he's obviously not better than Joel Embiid either. Uh, right. I, I feel you on who I'd rather have though. Um, on that and su- super hardcore East, like the East is just making it more and more probable that we get just a fucking NBA. No more conferences. No more nothing. They're making it very very obvious. Um, and then. Last thing I'll bring up before the podcast ends. I have parenting to get to here shortly. Uh, Detroit Lions, Dan Campbell's decision to go for it on fourth down. With like 44 seconds to go, they're out of timeouts. You can take a three-point lead. Is, I mean, and then I've even heard other coaches. There there was... 44. time than that. That's all it was left. 44 seconds. No, there was clock has stopped. They went. 44 seconds, clock has stopped. Fourth and inch, fourth and inches. He goes for it. That was Green Bay's last timeout. And they go for it. Oh, you're talking about that one. I thought you were talking about earlier in the game. Because, like, like, earlier in the beginning of the fourth quarter or end of the On third, his own 29? They, they, they were up three on their own 29. And they, it was like, and they went for it on fourth down. It's like, okay, you, you go for it on fourth down. If if you don't make it here, it's a tie game automatically. Correct. The Packers scored Correct. a touchdown out of it. They took the lead. But um, the fourth and inches one uh, at the end of the game, I'm not mad at. Well, I've heard a lot of coaches standing up for him, being like, well, you always win it on offense if you can, right? Yeah. I ain't seen none of y'all motherfuckers making this decision. Not, not right. never. 
Not I, okay. Like the 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 one controversy that you see, trying to get him to make bad decisions. <laughs> the one controversy that you'll see sometimes in the NBA is like when they have one timeout left, it's third and five. Do you run the ball and make them burn their last timeout, or do you throw the ball for a first down and try to end the game? I get throwing the ball in that situation and trying to end the game. This is entirely different. People always say you win it on offense if you can. That's way throwing the ball on third down is way different. Than being able to take a three point lead when the other team has no timeouts left in under a minute. Now, their defense was poor. They were missing like three starting defensive linemen. I, I get, they, they, these motherfuckers drop 31 on your head. Probably drop a little bit less than that, though, if you punt the ball on your own 29, but neither here nor there. It's just, Dan Campbell, you just allowed the largest comeback in NFC Championship history last postseason because of this shit. And when it works, people love you. But do you think that that kind of decision making right there is a little bit too brazen and is going to cost them in the playoffs? Or do you think it's more of like, if I played for this dude, I would love to go for it on every fourth down, fuck it. Like his players love it. Let's rock and roll. And who cares of the consequences? Like what side of the fence are you on? I, I me, me personally, if I'm playing for this dude, I would, I would I'd love rather it play for him than anybody else. This guy yeah. coaches how I play Madden. So yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm playing for. Like, fuck yeah, let it roll, baby. Let's get it. So that that's the side that I'm on. But you could have played in a Super Bowl for sure, like for sure. It's the it's the same thing as Kyle Shanahan refusing to run the ball in the Super Bowl. Like this is what got us here. Sometimes you got to change what got you there to actually win. You know, there was once a time where I was watching a game and. A Super Bowl, and the coach said, and the starting quarterback said, we're going to keep doing the same thing that got us here, and yada, yada. And that was Peyton Manning and John Fox. And they went out there and got their fucking clocks cleaned by the Seattle Seahawks and scored eight points. And Seattle scored like you, 40 or 50 something. You have to adjust things that you're doing. You have to be able to work on the fly. And here's the biggest thing is that, like, the most successful franchises that we've seen in the NFL for the last 20 years is now the Kansas City Chiefs and the Patriots. They are by far the most successful franchises that we've seen. And like their motto is always like, don't beat yourself. And I can't help but to think that going forward yeah. on your own 29-yard line on fourth down is is costing yourself. Like that's that's what they – is beating yourself. But like you say, like if the players want to do it and everybody's down, <laughs> fuck it, right? Like it's 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 such an interesting dynamic to try to work through. Because uh, I, I see it on both sides of the fence. Like, I would love it if I played for him, but I would also love it if I was coaching against him. Like, that's that's the thing, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely. such a weird thing. It's it's such a weird thing, man. So, But based on how their defense was playing, giving up 31 points, now I think if that game is like 12 to 12 or 14 to 14, I think he probably calls that play a little bit differently. I do think that he would have. But... Big nuts, man. Big nuts, big rewards. But epic fails in there too, man. So like, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna knock him for it. I'm just saying it was a troubling thing to see for a second. Um, yeah. But when it works, it works. And you also scored thirty, not thirty-one points. So you can probably get a fourth in inches, right? Like you can probably get that done. You would, you would think, but they, they so, had fourth and one early, and you know. Blew it. Yeah, I mean, it was dumb. But they won. They won, so, you know. That's the thing. Even whenever Goff throws five fucking interceptions, even whenever they do silly shit like this, they're still winning games, so maybe that's just part of the magic of we know we're, like, yeah, we're going to go for it on fourth down. If we don't get it, we're going to smack them in the mouth, and we're going to get the ball back and score a touchdown, and then, you know, maybe there's something to be said. I mean, this dude's upbeat as fuck, so, like, maybe there's something to be said for that of, like, we roll these dice, and we'll always come out on top, and we'll see what happens, so... I just wanted to get your feedback on that. Um, and then... As long as everyone's on the same page. Yeah. Good. And then I wanted to cover some more things in the NFL, but I don't really think it's necessary. Chiefs are good. Ravens are good. Chargers are decent. Like, we, we know the deal. We'll see what happens in a couple more weeks once we get... I mean, we, I feel like there's still a lot of games. There's still, like, five games left in the season. There's a lot Whatever. Of we'll wait. The we'll wait three more games, and then Christmas will be here, and then we'll get to talk to the NBA trade deadline before you know it, so... We uh, we appreciate y'all showing love, watching. You know, we're we're gonna hit you guys on Monday with another one, Monday or Tuesday, and we'll talk a little more NFL once we see what kind of happens throughout the week and through these games. I appreciate y'all rocking with us. Stay up. We'll holla. <laughs>